All right, I'm Nick Castellanos, and I'm here to give a presentation about the history of the Bauhaus today. Uh, the Bauhaus was founded in 1919, Weimar, Germany. Uh, Bauhaus is a German word that translates to building school. Walter Gropius was born in 1883, and he was the founder of the Bauhaus. He wanted to find a unity between art, design, and teach it to students um, in that new field. Um, he finished school in 1907 with an architecture degree and he was offered a head position at an applied art school in Weimar and he actually turned down that position to start his own firm in Berlin. Um, while working there he kind of came up with the idea of creating art and design together and he wanted to start an own, his own institution where he could teach that. Um, the school that previously offered him a job actually shut down in 1919 so he had kind of connections with the people and he was able to take over the building himself and start his own institution there where he could teach a unity between art and design. Um, the building today is still standing and is recognized as a world heritage cultural site. Um, the school opened with only three teachers on staff, um, all of which were artists. This is a picture of some of uh, Gropius in the middle and then some of his fellow staff. Um, the curriculum started with some preliminary courses, kind of like it goes here, and after the completion of that, they then moved on into a specialized field. Gropius thought of originally making a school, one that unifies art and design, but soon realized after a couple of years of teaching that, that it was much too costly and not very financially uh, practical. In 1923, he changed the goals of the Bauhaus to stress designing and mass production, and, and the school adopted the slogan, Art in the Industry. In 1924, funding for the Bauhaus was cut drastically due to political reasons. The school was moved to Dessau, Germany. Dessau had a rising economy, and funding for the school was, you know, greatly accepted there in this new town. So Gropius moved the school, and he actually designed the whole building himself, which is right here. Um, the new building was a very unfamiliar style. It had many new features that really haven't been used before some of which were steel frame structures, glass curtain walls, and a layout in an asymmetrical format, um, all of which were became part of modern uh, architecture, and the classrooms were all kind of grouped together for maximum space. Um, Gropi stepped down as director in 1928, and his position was fulfilled by this architect right here. His name is Hannes Meyer. He was a Swiss man born in 1889, um, he did studies in Basel, Berlin, and finished school in Switzerland. Um, he started to change the focus of the school more towards architecture, and also focused on doing more kind of public work than luxurious work like Gropius did. This is an example of one of my uh, two-point perspectives of kind of like an architectural building. Um, I just thought I'd put this in here to kind of show an example of what kind of work they did while Meyer was here there at the school. Um, Meyer's had to step down um, from his position in 1929. He was removed due to his Marxist uh, convictions that the city council find, found troublesome. So pretty much political reasons that he was kicked out and had to leave. And then this, or that man, um, Ludwig Mies van der Rohe, took over. Um, van der Rohe was born in 1886. He also wanted to focus the Bauhaus more towards architecture because he was a famous architect himself. Um, during, he took over during World War II, uh, two in 1930 when Van der Rohe took over, and that ended up being the end of the Bauhaus, um, all because of the Nazi party. Germany became an unstable political state during the war, and at this time, um, all the financial support shifted from the war, or from the Bauhaus kind of to the war. Um, so the Bauhaus lost its funding again, and they had to move once again into Berlin. This is a picture of the factory that uh, the school moved into. Uh, van der Rohe had to fund the school pretty much all out of his own money, <coughs> renting this old abandoned factory um, for the school. Uh, the school was only open for 10 months. Um, renovations were made to kind of have a better learning environment for the students, but was shut down eventually by the Nazi party. Um, the Bauhaus had a great impact on art and design throughout the world. It changed how architecture was appreciated, looked at design throughout North America and Europe and other parts of the world. And the same can be said same can be said for furniture design and many other related design fields. The Bauhaus lasted only 14 years and was closed in 1933. 
but it was one of the most influential design schools of the 20th century. It changed the way design was performed for years to come, and many famous designers and their work have come from that school, all because of one man and his thought of unity with art and design. Try to stay away from the black because I just thought it was too drastic. Because especially, especially because a lot of my pictures were black and white, I thought maybe it would be like too much of a blend. So I was trying to try and change it up with a darker, uh, kind of calmer color. Um, this is a little something I picked up from my blog where I have mainly black and white pictures. When you have that, sometimes if you take a kind of a neutral color, like a gray um, or something. Yeah, and I was just going to say, and gray it out even mm -hmm. a bit. So you know, if you take a, a kind of grayish green or grayish anything, and you could even try maybe graying out that red a little more. You know, just a darker shade might right. help a little bit. Other questions and comments? <coughs> yeah. I thought your presentation was very good. You went through it like fluently and you kept on track with everything. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, definitely give us some practice. I put on your little picture. Uh, where's that at? Uh, it's at the MU, kind of by. Uh, looking at the, the yeah, like this is like the parking lot of the parking garage. It's like I'm inside looking through a window, mm -hmm. and then um, I think it might have been an addition or whatever with like the big glass wall mm -hmm. on the outside. Mm -hmm. so. Other questions and comments? I thought it was you doing pretty well, so I don't really know why you bothered with the, looking at the note cards at all. You did you feel like you do it? Was it? Or were you really looking for information on these uh, cards or I what? I kind of used them more to keep on track um, mm -hmm. because I, what I kind of had in mind was put like more information on here than I need so that I didn't want like any like really dead space in mind. Mm -hmm. So I knew if you know things got cut off or something that I needed to just get back on track kind of quickly. That's what I kind of had these mm -hmm. for. Well, actually, I think you might be better off thinking in, you know the next time that you do this sort of thing the other way around. Because the more you know it, the more it'll come to you anyway. And um, it, it makes it seem like you're having to search for your information anytime you look at a note card anyway. And if you really had to look at a note card, you'd want it to have as little information on it as possible because it's easier to find than you'd want only the most, most uh, essential facts. Any other questions and comments? Okay, thank you.